Today is Wednesday, November 25th. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, but today is Eric Kratz Day. That's right. We sat down with Kratz. He had a blast. Let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. Hello, how's everyone doing? We hope you're gearing up for a fantastic Thanksgiving coming up. My name's Jimmy. I got Jake with me. He is in Tika K, and we just wrapped up an hour-long interview with Kratzy the King. Uh, really good time. Just DM'd him, said, hey, you want to come on? He said, yes. We could have asked him questions until the end of time. I felt bad for keeping him, but we just kept going. I mean, even the very end, he just gave us a really good Higgy and Tanaka story out of nowhere. So, Jake, that was awesome, huh? Incredible. We, uh, you know, you hear through the media and even us as we get more into the walls of baseball, you hear great things about them and – yeah, I mean, it was it was almost tough to keep it on Yankees at times because there's so many good stories, so many good connect the dots, and uh, yeah, he was great. Yep, we talked about a lot of the Yankee stuff, Rays stuff. I mean, I don't know. We talked about difference between the 17 Yankees and the 19 Yankees, 20 Yankees, alternate site, Davey, everything that we could think of, what he wants to do after now that he's retired. So I won't take up too much of the time. We'll just throw it straight to the interview. But reminder, Black Friday sale is going on right now at the John Boy Media Store. Shop.johnboymediastore. Go get yourself some gear. Help us out. Enjoy the holidays. Have a great Thanksgiving. Here's Eric Kratz. Baseball. We are joined by, you may remember him from the Medicine Hat Blue Jays or the New Haven Ravens or the Charleston Alley Cats, Auburn Double Days, New Hampshire Fisher Cats, Dunedin Blue Jays, Peoria Seguero, Syracuse Sky Chiefs, Indianapolis Indians, Aguila Sibanas, Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, the Reading Fight and Fills, the Buffalo Bisons, the Omaha Storm Chasers, the Tacoma Rainiers, the St. Lock. St. Salt Lake Bees, Columbus Clippers, Scranton Wilkes-Barre Yankees, or the Phillies, Royals, Pirates, Rays, Giants, Astros, Blue Jays, Brewers, U.S. National Team, or most recently, the New York Yankees. We are joined by Eric Kratz. Kratzy, how you doing, man? Tired after listening to all those, but you forgot one. You forgot one, and we'll see if you forgot which one. It's it's okay. It's okay. Oh, I never no. got that bat for the team. But and I don't know if you're allowed to mention it on this on this show. I saw you were on the Red Sox briefly, but you you didn't play for them. No, they they actually called me in from the bullpen one game, the one day, one of the two days I was there, and they were like, "You're gonna pinch hit for Sandy Leone if there's two runners on here." And that was a ground ball double play, and Sandy didn't get up, and I never got in the Red Sox game. I was fired two days later. Man, <laughs> you've seen a lot of the country, huh? You got Salt Lake, you got the South there. All of it. All of it. I, I didn't spend too much time in the South. You know, I, I did a little bit. I'm a big Midwest guy, I guess. Um, a lot of East Coast, which is right up my alley. Um, stayed away from most of the West Coast. You know, the Tacoma Rainiers, that was a 10-day stint that I'm not going to not gonna ever really regret quitting. Um then going to Japan too, Team USA in Japan, mm -hmm. twice, twice to Japan. I know how to say I farted in Japanese. Let's hear it. Oh, Naradeta. How many times do you use that with Tanaka? Per day. <laughs> <laughs> he he will he knows exactly, and I know how to say did you fart? It's, it's oh, Naradeta is I farted, and oh, Narashta is did you fart? Okay, so and Anada is fart? I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> don't know how it breaks down. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know if it's word for word. And it's probably very, it's probably, a, yeah, it's probably a, a different dialect. But he, uh, yeah, he loves, he loved it. He loved the fact that I always, he always knew if I farted. 
<laughs> just easy <laughs> let go. Well, congrats on retirement right away. Thank you. Cheers. I just quit. As, I didn't retire. I quit. Okay. Just as you hit free agency, we had, uh, we had, who'd we have on here? We had Kinger. We had Mike King. And he was, he was saying that you were talking big game, you know, Hey cash, you know, you can finally pick me up now. Got my service t- time in. Did he tell you what I said? I told cash. I said in the lunchroom, I said, I know this is kind of, this is before the season ended. I said, I know this is kind of early. I said, but I'm going to hit free agency this year. Is there a chance you guys extend me a qualifying offer? (laughs) And he said, he said, it's on the table. Well, what's all this one in a million talk? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I guess it was just DJ one qualifying offer per team. It's messed up. It's okay. Uh, I'll deal with it. Do you have a closet full of jerseys? Like all those teams? Do you have, uh, have you saved any? I got a tour here. I'm walking. I got to watch where I'm walking because, you know, there might be some dirty draws or something, but, and my kids are halfway in the house here. So they're in a, uh, they're in virtual school now. So virtual school is, yeah. So I'm trying to look to see before I show you, we got Christmas presents underneath. So I'll try to, I'll try to give you those. Yeah. You don't spoil. I don't know. Can you flip? There we go. And zoom. You can, there we go. There, yes. there it is. That. That's awesome. Still going. That's... Some throwbacks. <laughs> Still holding. Look at that. Look at that Fall League jersey. See how many Christmas. That thing's made of cotton. That was from 2005. <laughs> Little throwback Phillies. Let's see. Let's Man. see if I have my first. My first Yankees. My first Yankees jersey. Looks like there's a spring training one right next to it. Is there? Oh, yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, that's my first one. I thought they were going to retire 36 because I was 38 this year. I thought they were going to retire it because because I hit so well in 36 that that no one else was going to be able to get it. 100 but, batting average. Yeah, baseball Thousand. reference doesn't doesn't lie. Yeah. 100 batting average. No, that was that was pretty much my career average everywhere else. <laughs> 1,000. 1,000 that year. I- Man, I, th- I think what I think what they're going to do is in Monument Park they'll do kind of one of those Kobe things 8 and 24 and they'll just do the 36 and the 38. So that way that way you're covered. Perfect. I was wondering. I thought they were going to add it together. They were going to build like a little it'd be <laughs> like, like Monument Monument Tree, like when the weed when they pull the weeds out, they'll just call those the Kratzes. We uh keep, keep the Monument Park nice. <laughs> Beautiful. We 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 had a conversation with you in spring training, two thousand eighteen. You don't remember it, but we were the two idiots behind the cage who yelled your name and gave you one of these. You did it right back. Uh, is there is there does that mean anything for people listening? You bang your your fists after home runs as soon as you touch home plate. When did that start? How long you been doing that? Oh man, that started that started probably when I had my first when we had our first kid who just my son who turned 14 yesterday, Braden. Um, happy birthday. So I would do, yes, I'll tell him that John boy says happy birthday. Um, but yeah, we, uh, I would, I would pound my fist once for God, once for my wife and once for each of my kids. So we had to stop having kids or it would have taken a long time. <laughs> yeah. So that's five things now. Five of them. Yep. Three kids. So did one you wife, go Two, two, and then one no. at the end. All, all in the same. I think all in the same. No, you yeah. switch it up. I don't know. Maybe I, I, I don't, don't know. know. Right. My flash, my flash, and my game isn't too isn't isn't really there. So maybe I switched it up. But it, hopefully, it was only ever five. I didn't add one in there every once in a while. There'd be some questions then. The misses yeah. would say, "What the, the hell misses, was that? What was that six one about? What man? was the six one? She would have, <laughs> she would have been for? on top of that for sure." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny, man, man. I mean, there's a lot of flip from things I want to ask you about. Uh, a lot of questions we had. I will stay Yankees because this is talking Yanks, and maybe a little bit out of Corona season. And you were at the the alternative site, and you know you've played a lot of baseball in your day and done a lot of minor leagues and a lot of major leagues. What was up with the alternative site? Was that when you decided, you know what, I should have retired a year earlier? Or were you like, what, this sucks? Or was it fun down there? 
We we definitely had a good time. We definitely had a good time. Um, the guys we had down there, you know, the veteran guys, we made it a good time. But we also we also worked. I mean, you had you had to work. It was one of those things. I think it would have been worse had there been like a bunch of other games going on other places, and you're stuck at the alternate site taking taking BP live BP off of you know, Luis Hill and Viscaino and dudes throwing a billion miles an hour all over the place. Um, but everybody was in that situation and everybody was, you know, working towards, you just don't know that goal of always making the big leagues, I guess is such an elusive motivating goal that it's, it, it kept us going down there, but it also kept us going because we knew that, if we didn't like what what are you what are you going to go home and do you know you, you we we're baseball players and until you quit that's what you're doing you're playing baseball and there's a ton of guys who didn't get an opportunity to go to the alternate site so it was something that i think i think having a good mix of young guys and old guys young guys with energy and old guys with jokes we had a good time were you hitting off the same guys you were catching? Because obviously you had a, yeah. built a relationship with Davey and Clark. Was it like two different relationships when you get in the box? Uh, did you fare well off those kids? I only got to face. I only got to face Clark. I didn't get to face Davey. Um, I always caught Davey, so I never, I never got to face him. But I got to face Clark. I think I hit one ball semi forward. I think I fouled one off my shin. Other okay. than that, he just Counts. he just annihilated me. I mean he just kept throwing that curveball. And if you watched any games, I'm not hitting a curveball. Like I'm <laughs> I'm waiting for the heater. And like down there it was I mean it was it was a big I felt like it was a it was an NBA NBA street ball game. We were talking smack to each other like throwing 3-0 breaking balls, like, at the alternate site. Like, you never see that. It started out as, like, well, it's live BP, and it ended up me being, like, sending videos to my buddies of hitting a home run off of Sessa or off of Domingo Acevedo. Like, it was, you know, it ended up just being trash talking fest. So there was there was a lot of competition. I really wish I would have gotten a hit off of Clark Schmidt, but – didn't happen you got is, is there any is there Sessa. any is there any trash talk that may come to mind that that maybe we could tell the people or uh, i'm trying to think in that environment me me and jimmy are normally in the office there and you know we're guys and there's balls around and we we create games as the day goes on there's there's these little things that hang from the ceiling jimmy bounces the ball off the wall and tries to get it stuck on the ceiling did any of those type of games uh form at at the at the alternate site cuz that seems like the perfect environment for competition yeah you know what unfortunately I think it normally would have like that sounds like some of the triple A games that we would play, like who can, you know, pop a shot type of, you know, yes. tape a basket to the wall. Unfortunately, COVID, they were really strict. Like you show up to the park, you work, you get out. So there was less, there was less of that, you know, the boys hanging out at the yard kind of thing. It was more of, more of the, you know, you, you had to come and you had to spend most of your time out on the field. But even there, like, we find – we find, I, guess, I guess you just try, find ways to make it through difficult situations. Uh, so, you you know, you're bored and you you find different stuff to do. So, you set up the you – know, you set up the, the BP bucket of balls and instead of throwing down to second, you set it up at second and you try to see who can hit it. And then the one day we set up, you know, a folding chair at second base and oh, see yeah. who could knock it down. And then it, then it turned into leaning up against something and see you can bust a hole in it. And, you know, just standard college things. That probably sounds like it's what you guys do too. So yeah, all that guys, stuff's good. Guys being dudes a little bit. No doubt. I'm a no big, doubt. sorry. I had to deal with something, but I'm a big fungo golf <laughs> fan. That's what I would be doing nonstop. With that gold chain, do you wear that gold chain? This is uh, this is Jake's. I stole it from his because he's not in the office today. 
This is his Davy chain. So when Davy yeah. wore the chain and the sweater, Jake bought the same exact sweater and the same exact chain. That's that's. Not, I didn't know if you had like if you got a sack in the Miami game or something or what <laughs> yeah. happened there. No, that's what is, it's for. Nice. This is that's Jake's. Davy chain. It's the first time I'm like wearing that. it. Yes, yes. Young nice. Davy. It looks good. Fungo golf. Did, fun game. Fun yeah. game. More of a pit. More of a pitcher's game. Um, mm. not not to say. I mean, I hope that doesn't hurt your feelings. No, but if it does, then the shirt fits, I guess. <laughs> no, that's that's fair. That's fine. I was gonna say I want to talk about your home run book, your book, Love the guys that. you've clipped, Love that. because the percentage of pers- impressive name to home run ratio is really good. I've been doing this for like that. three years now, Kratzy. Whenever we talk about you or you get called up. And the guy have tweets out there about it. I'm just like, this dude's home run log. Like, we have Trevor Plouffe on. He hit over 100 home runs. I think your book's more impressive than his. Ooh, I- I've Trevor let him know. Plouffe. Trevor Plouffe banged out fours and fives. Yeah. That's what yeah. he did. Yeah. Look at, listen to this. You got 2012 Burnett, Pirates Burnett. He was dealing Solid then. That year. Saunders, closer Craig Kimbrell. You got Wade Davis, Araldis Chapman, Dan Heron, John Lackey, Tehran, Price, Cliff Lee. It keeps going. Bumgarner, James Shields, and then Luis Sessa is your last home run. Yeah. Sessa. Sorry about that, buddy. You think these are these are guys that just don't scout you and they just throw that get me over fastball and you just jump them? 100%. 100%. <laughs> I, have sto- I have stories about all of them. I have stories about all of them, and it's tremendous. But my favorite one is Cliff Lee. Cliff Lee, who I became good friends with when we played in Philly together, we would send each other workout <laughs> videos. We would do this one workout. Not going to explain what it was, but, you know, we would send it. I'd beat him. He'd beat me. i get traded to the Blue Jays the next year. I look on the calendar. We're playing them. Clearly going to face Cliff when we play them. So I sent the next video. I beat him. I was extra motivated that morning. I remember it was 6.30 in the morning, so it makes me sound like I really worked hard. Mm-hmm. 6.30 in the morning, sent it to him, and at the end of the video I said, and you know what? I'm going to hit a home run off you this year. Wow. And he sent back, ha, ha, whatever, whatever. Boom, face him in spring training. Thought that was my shot. Only got a single off him. Then we go to the Rogers Center. We actually played them two in Philly. Um, and we were going through the line. We beat them in Philly. And we went and through the line, the manager, John Gibbons, goes, Hey, Crazy, you're, you're DHing tomorrow. I'm like, DHing? Shoot. Yeah, I'm the cheese. <laughs> and it was Cliff that was pitching. So DHed were. In a nothing nothing game, Edwin seventh inning, Edwin Encarnacion hits a triple off the center field wall and should have probably been caught. Cliff was pissed. And he just I know he's gonna, you know, go first pitch heater, try to bury it in. Clipped him. Bat flipped him, just disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> but when you only have 31 career home runs. You pretty much remember all of them, so. I mean, 10 out of your 30 came on the first pitch, a third of them. So that was the, that was the recipe there. I wonder how many that even is. came. Man. Do you remember the Chapman homer? I almost had two. Chapman okay. homer, Cliff, Cliff Lee was on first base. We're down by one. Cliff's pinch running for Delman Young, who was – not fleet of foot. He had like ankle surgery, so he had like one foot to run on. So they brought Cliff in to pinch run. He gets picked off on a 2-2 pitch, maybe 3-2 pitch. I don't know. He wasn't running. And to this day, he'll say, I don't even know where I was going, but he gets picked <laughs> off. Chapman throws me a middle-middle 3-2 heater. Ah, not middle-middle, middle down, and I clip it. And I definitely told Chapman plenty of times, even in the middle of his lat pull down and bicep workouts, that I that I clipped him. 
I got you. And then in and then in Cincy when I was with Toronto, I had the game we were tied. And I drove Colby Rasmussen from second on a line drive off the left field wall to put us up for a double. So that was that was my two chappy stories. But then I think the other two, three times he struck me out, or two times, I'm not sure. Don't worry about that. Doesn't those. matter. No one, yeah. no one keeps track of that stuff. I am not worried at all. He can strike me out ten times. I clipped Chappie. I was the only person for a little while to clip Chappie and Kimbrel. Active in the big leagues. How about that? Really? Eric Kratz. That's awesome. Yeah, but that's so- a trivial pursuit. Someone beat you, and yeah. then you had to like call him up, be like, "What the fuck, man? Come on." I, I, I don't. Yeah. Not once, beat once you. Once it got broken, him. yeah. Once it got broken, it was I was the first one. So you, man. you are such a dangerous wormhole for us because Delman Young is a friend. We talked to him. He's he's grew up with Trevor Plouffe, that guy who made a career off of hitting fours and fives. But well, I'll try to try to make it Yankees a little bit for now. Uh, did you ever feel like Higgy would just talk your ear off so much and you'd be like, Higgy, stop? No, never. <laughs> there, is no, there, is nothing, there is nothing Kyle Higashioka could do that is wrong. Yeah. Nothing. He is my we, second favorite teammate of all time. We Okay, well, going to need the first. But we I asked that because Higgy met up with us at spring training and he, he was a blast. Like, he was Higgy. He's... Like you're saying, Higgy can do nothing wrong. And so at the end, just just trying to feel it out, I was like, so Higgy, you got anything for us? And he just goes, no, I'm uh, I'm not really much for small talk. And we're like, <laughs> we're like dude, we're doing a podcast, man. <laughs> so that's that's where that stemmed from. Yes, I like that. I like what? that. Hig, Hig is the best. Oh, man. Hig is the best. He's got great dad jokes. He's not even a dad. I wish you guys could get him to open up, but it's going to be tough. He's not, he's not going to open up for many people. He's got the guitar going now. He's doing a little bit more. It's like getting that. there. Who's teammate number one? Pete Orr. Pete Orr. Pete Orr. Wow. It's going to ring. That's going to make Jake's memory go crazy. Love Was it. it. I love it because you guys, you guys are baseball guys. Ah. I, anyway, go ahead. Yeah. I'll get off on a tangent. Go ahead. No, that's good. I mean, Pete Orr, I want to say he was uh, like a second baseman. Was he a lefty hitting second baseman or something like that? Spot on. You got it. Second, and that's third, ju- Phillies. He's just Braves, number one. Nationals. Three he, career did he, save you, did he save you from getting hit by a train or something? And, and that's like that's what gave him the spot, or he's just the dude? He's the dude, man. Like He's okay. like, he, he's just, he's the dude. You said it. He's the dude. Okay. Would you guys spend time at Lehigh Valley together? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Look at you. Look at you. You're Looking Google machine quick, quick with the quick with the fingers over here. Yeah. He what was, was what what was different? What, what was uh the vibes? Twenty seventeen Yankees when you first come over, you get called up to twenty twenty nineteen, twenty twenty. You know, that twenty seventeen team had a lot of it, you know, at time felt like magic or just like fun, like, you know. First time no. they weren't supposed to be there. Uh, the playoff run was crazy. You came up at the at the tail end of that. You were with a lot of the guys in in AAA, and then you know the expectations grow and and it's a bit of a different mood. It, it, would you say that was accurate from yours, or did it feel the same guys, same team? No, it felt like the same. It felt like the same team. It felt like because I didn't play in AAA with them in seventeen. I was traded over. I was in Columbus the whole year. Um, so I didn't know the guys. So in 17, for me, it was like, you know, you go to a new team, you go straight to the big leagues. You don't know exactly how, you know, they're going to take you because you weren't with the organization. You've never met the guys. And these guys were, they were so pro. They were so cheap. They were the cheese. I mean, they just like, you had a guy like, you had a guy like CC as a team leader. And no, CC's never met anybody that, you know, he doesn't know before. And it's just, you know, it's, it's all business. So while the, while the mantra, I guess, you know, in the media at that point in 17 was, Oh, don't know. This team's not, you know, are they going to be good? Are they going to not be good? That's not how they saw it. Like they saw it as like, we're going to win the world series. Like there's no like, Oh, we're playing with house money. This is so cool. Young guys playing. 
everybody up there wanted to win the World Series. And then some of the names changed. I think pretty much the core was very similar this year. And it was no different. It was no different in 18 in spring training when I was when I was with the Yankees or, you know, this year in spring training or this year in 2.0 spring training. It was it, it was no different. And I think that's something that's telling when you're in the Yankees organization. Um, people people say it all the time. Oh, it's such a storied franchise and everything. It's a it's an organization that expects to win. And as much as maybe in 17, it was a bunch of young guys that were leading, that were leading the charge with judges. I think he was second in MVP that year, rookie of the year. That, that was the, that was the shtick that was putting out, that was being put out there. Those guys had no other expectation, but to win from, from whatever it was from CC down to, down to judgey who was a rookie. Yeah. It felt that way. I mean, it, it, for us, for the fans, it was like, you know, we'll get some of these. They signed a bunch of one-year contracts with Holiday and stuff, and it was like, you know, usually when you see that, it's try to flip them or, or what have you. And then and then it felt like there's to lose a little bit, but that was fun. You got called up in the middle of that September when they were doing finger guns. How does that go when you get called up to someone like, you know, and then the Yankees do the four and they do all this. This year it was the elbow stuff. Did the but Brewers – is that like, do you have to ask like, Hey, you guys got something do it. Or does I someone tell ask you Ask immediately? Okay. Cause as much as I, you know, I, I have looks for TV. I have more of a, I have more of a, um, social media. I, my social media platform is low. So I don't look for things like that. Like the celebrations at second base until I'm in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually I, I this is this is how I found out about John Boy. And you were probably okay. just you were you were probably recording your show in in like the closet somewhere. Um, but now you're big time, so I really appreciate you having me on now. But I found out that there was you had me going to second base, and you were like, "Well, it's probably this guy." You know, you used your voice, and you were like, <laughs> "Oh, the guns and everything." I hit a double in like a seventeen to three game, and I'm like, "Ah." Oh, like I knew I had to do the guns. And oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those I were the first to. like breakdowns. It was just I would break down the finger guns. Who was yeah. loose, who was good. Yeah, you had and to I, do them. And I had to do them, but it was a 17 to 3 game. So it was like, can I do this from like Ooh. where nobody's watching? It just felt it just felt very I'm not I'm no, no way am I against like bat flips or anything like that. Like I'm lo- I love when guys express themselves. <laughs> whatever it whatever it is. But like, it just felt a little bit awkward, and then and then you kind of dissed me on the. So I, I thought about not. I dissed you because wow, you dissed me. I don't think you I dissed, dissed me. You. I forget. Well, I hope you. Well, if you didn't diss me, then I would feel. <laughs> then I would feel. Dissed. I remember. I remember. I, if I remember, I haven't watched it. I was. I was like, you weren't sure if this was the right thing to do. Like, is this it? I just got here. No, that's perfect. You're you're right. You're right on. That I was uh, I John seen Boy it for a bit. But. Yeah, me neither. That was me at my nine to five, whispering as uh, hopes of my boss didn't walk by. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't work nine to five now? No. Well, yes, Shoot. but at my own company now, so that's nice. At your own company, so yeah, that's yeah. nice. You yeah. probably work more than nine to five. Yeah, that's that's yeah. not nice. With but... that gold chain, for sure. Oh yeah, this is nice. It's very real. It's real. So, I, <laughs> so it real. sounds real. <laughs> Did the Brewers have anything? I mean, you go 17, and then you go to the Brewers, and you're like a fan favorite over there. I think Brewers fans, like, they, Brewers fans claim you. Yankees fans were like, hey, man, like, you know, he was with us in 17. He batted 1,000. He's a Yankee. But Brewers fans, really, you endeared yourself to that crowd. Uh, was that, like, actually, I, I want to ask you so many questions. Like, trade deadline for you for the last seven years had to be awesome. You're like, someone's grabbing me. <laughs> Some contender is gonna grab me. <laughs> awesome or awful, one of the two. Because one of the two. Here, like trade deadline. Okay, the first one. Nobody, nobody's picking. I guess one time I got picked up at the real trade deadline. I was that like August thirty first. Like I didn't even know that guy switched teams. Like deadline. <laughs> okay. But but yeah, like August thirty first. That's my trade deadline. Mine and mine and Quentin Berry's. 
when we have to be put on a big league team. But it, it was something that like my kids had already gone back to school by that point. So they left the season and it was like my wife's sitting there like watching like, oh man, like, and my name's never showing up in trade rumors. So that's never like trade rumors is trade rumors except Eric Kratz. So it's never like we have any, any inkling of what's going to happen. And so August 31st shows up, the kids are back at school. My wife's like, well, the minor league season ends in five days. He's going to be home. Nope. Traded to the Yankees playing to the end of October. <laughs> see ya. See you in two months, you know? See you so, on TV. There's right. Exactly. See you not playing on TV. Like, Hey, were you in the bullpen <laughs> today? I saw they were winning 13 to one. I thought you were going to get in. Nope. <laughs> but yeah, the, yeah. I mean, trade deadlines, shoot. It's, it, it's anxious, but it's also great because you're in the minor leagues and if you don't get traded, you don't get called up. Dudes in minor leagues are just like, I don't know if I'm even coming in tomorrow. Like we, it, with with the Yankees this year, and yeah, I, it, Jimmy and I, we we were so excited for this. Everything we've heard about you, you're a great dude, blah blah. blah. Turns out it's all wrong, but um, <laughs> you know, I yeah, I'm like we're looking at the, I, we're both salivating over the Brewers playoff stuff. We can't do that. We can't do that in this season. Uh, the the thing that took over, and J- Jimmy's wearing my chain, and now I'm mad about it. Davey comes up, father son. Um, you're also raking while this is happening, and the rest of the lineup kind of – you were like the hottest bat in the Yankees li- lineup for a week, which was about a tenth of the season or whatever. You're – you know, the star pitching prospect is in love with you. Like, uh, what what's going on? Are you just living it up? I mean, do you stand a little taller? You go from 6'4 to 6'5? Is, is your wife, like, texting you and being like, who are you? Yes Network's doing features on you? What What's going on during that time period? she she was probably more like is this a full 60 games that we're gonna play like the season (laughs) should be over soon like you're you're on tv too much that's the beauty that's the beauty of having a woman who loves you is she's not enamored by you being like really bald and shaved on tv like it doesn't she's not enamored by that so What was going on during the season? Yeah, I got like, you know, I hit some singles for a like seven day span. Um, and I two accidentally doubles. said, okay, two doubles. Yeah. I was beating, I was beating the shift. How about that? There's there plenty of seasons. <laughs> There's plenty of seasons where I went two for 32 instead of, instead of whatever I went this year. But it, it, it was one of those things that I think, I, I think the, you know, the, the Davy thing, especially that's always been me. Um, it just never, I always try really hard as the non, the non star, the non prospect to keep myself out of the limelight. Like I'm there for my teammates. I'm there for the guys. So I'm going to say stupid stuff in the locker room. And somebody one day was like, Hey, why don't you do that on, you know, one of the shows that, that you go on, I'm like, first of all, no show is ever going to ask me to go on. They're like, oh, man, hey, is uh, Judge or Kratz available? Which, either one, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. we'll take each one. Like, my role on the team is – it's an old adage. Everyone's like, oh, man, you know, good clubhouse guy. Well, that's just – you just have the right people saying you're a good, good clubhouse guy. Because I've heard some turds that are called good clubhouse guys and they're not at all. They just sold it themselves. You know, that's, so it's, it's somewhat, somewhat like self-promotion and I can't stand self-promotion, but now that I need a job (laughs) after playing, I'm going to have to start self-promoting myself. So it kind of accidentally started happening because that day that I said, Oh, I get to go play catch with my son running out to the field. I had actually, they didn't catch it on, on the on the yes network i tripped running out of the running out of the dugout and our pitching coach was right there and i turned around and he was looking at me and he was like what happened and so i ran back in the dugout and i was like i ran back ran back up out of the dugout to like kind of restart and i go i'm just so excited to go play catch with my son (laughs) oh so the first part wasn't there 
the first part didn't didn't show up. It's I actually tripped coming out of the dugout. A real unlike trip or a fake career. trip? Yeah. Unlike earlier in my career when I got paid to trip. But that looked like a real trip, so that kind of counted. This so, was a real yeah. trip. Sold it well. Who who paid you? What was the who what was the bet? Uh two thousand dollars to take a dive on opening day. I mean, that's a no brainer. Yeah. Did they pay up right it. away? Right. I mean, I didn't have the cash. It wasn't winter ball. I didn't have the cash in my pocket in the first inning, but it was it was in the locker room after the game. There you go. That's pretty quick. Yeah. It was <laughs> yeah. two two thousand cash. Two thousand cash. And they both were like, money well spent. Perfect. There you so. go. I mean, there's a lot of bull. There was some bullpen catcher who made like majority of his money eating things that they would bet him to eat. I forget who it was. Was it Marcus Hanel? Is that who it is? <laughs> well, Marcus Hanel has the record for the most. He was the Brewers bullpen catcher up until this year. Um, he had the record for the most. Uh, Philly cheesesteaks eaten in the Phil in Philly's locker room or Philly's <laughs> the Philly's away clubhouse. It was it was absurd. Like four game series, like twenty four cheesesteaks. Oh my god! Oh my god! This That's... is this is a man. This is a man. This guy is ginormous. He's he is just uh yeah. He's Paul Bunyan. He just catches baseballs with, without a glove on. Oh, we're as as you can see, we're big time professionals. And and you mentioned, you know, now you're now you're you're doing the interviews. You're looking for a job. So we we interview Kinger last week or two weeks ago, and uh, he's yeah, I know it was again. We didn't air it. It was bad. Uh, no, he was he was great. Uh, but he starts mentioning, you know, like the season ends. He's like, you know, it's obviously emotional and sad. And like Kratz, he's talking retirement. And me, Jimmy, and the the ghost you heard b- before, producer Big Baby David, all our eyes get wide, and we're like, I don't, I don't think this is known. So, uh, what's go- was that known at a certain point of the season? Because I mean, in our opinion, it seems like you're hitting your prime. I mean, what was that a three sixty seven on base? So it just seems kind of out of out of left field. Yeah, I might be hitting my prime, but my power went way down this year. So it was time. Pops it was down. time to get out. No, it wasn't. It wasn't way out left field. It was something that my wife and I, we had decided before the season started, like I was just playing this season to play in the Olympics. Uh, You know, that was, I mean, to say you're an Olympian, I don't care what sport it is. Like that's, that's the chief. Awesome. That is like, like I, I wanted to make the Olympic badminton team, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't accept me. (laughs) But so I was playing for the Olympics and I never like set a date of when I'd be done. Like physically, I feel like I could play for another five years. Uh, I've been very fortunate. Not playing a lot saves the body. Um, yeah. You know, you don't get worn down watching games, but it's something that I going to the season. It was like, okay, this is you know, it's time to it's time to wrap it up. It's time to to be done. And I think a good way to go out is playing the Olympics. So that was, that was the original goal and COVID and everything being quarantined at home, not going anywhere. It it was a good, it was a good pre, you know, good trial run to see how life after not playing baseball was going to be. Still had to work out for half the day, but it was something that, you know, it was, it really confirmed our decision and my oldest is obviously, you know, he's 14, he's in eighth grade. So my kids are getting to the age where I need to be, I need to be around. I need to be home. And my wife needs to not be a single mom shuttling everybody to, to everything. And she needs some help. So it was, and it went, I went out not, not on, not on top cause we lost, but my boys were, were crying on the bus on the way home, like, Oh, we don't want you to be done. We don't want you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, look, I, I couldn't have been more blessed with how it, it ended besides not winning a world series. Um, that, that would have been, you know, the icing on the cake, the cherry on top, whatever you want to say, but most guys are done. Like they're, they're getting ripped by the media cause they stink. 
they're you know they are hurt they they can barely walk after they're done they need surgeries i'm able to i'm able to walk away i have like a walter mitty type of type of career you know i started off crappy and ended out ended ended great so i i couldn't i couldn't be more happy with how it ended we had our editor pulling up a bunch of he was doing this on his own uh, he runs our socials accounts and he was doing i don't know you probably saw a bunch of eric kratz highlight videos and like moments from your career and i i messaged him i was like do you know he's coming on like are you just doing this and he's like oh i was just down on eric kratz rabbit hole <laughs> like that's cool that he's coming on i was like that's wild but he pulled up a bunch of clips plays at the plate where you got banged up a bunch of times and he told me to ask you like it seemed like you were welcoming the collision more so than trying to dodge it. So no injuries from those collisions. And, and then too, you got any crazy collision memories or stories from those? No, no, uh, no injuries. I mean, the next day I sore, uh, I still watch football. Like, man, man, like guys like Prince Fielder trying to run me over. That was, that was the one, that was the one that I thought, thinking back on it probably wasn't a good choice. Like you just kind of, that's the guy you ole. You're like, ah, I don't want to, but that was always how, that, that was always how I took it. Like, I was like, I'm going to stand in there and I'm going to take it. And you know, I want, I want to deliver the blow. Um, yeah. I have stories about it. Shoot. We, <laughs> I, I was on, and when they, and when they changed the rule about no collisions, I actually was on a conference call with, I think it was probably like 15 to 16 other big league catchers. And I was one of only a few guys who didn't want them to change the rule. And I always felt like I don't play that much, but to me, that is a run. Like no matter how you look at it, a run, like you can say, well, it's technically only worth 0.22 in the analytic department of metrics, but it's a run. If I keep a run off the board, they're probably going to pinch hit for me in the seventh inning and I don't get a chance to put a run on the board where the other guys on that conference call, you know, your superstar catchers at the time. And that was right around when Buster broke his ankle. And so I, I know why they, they, they made the rule, you know, that guy's going to get 550 opportunities to 600 opportunities to put a run on the board. And I'm not going to get that. So I always felt like it was my duty to stay in there and and I just kind of liked giving a hit too. But the Chipper Jones one, I yeah, I don't know. I he I had hair before that one, and then it not he hit me so hard in the. I have a picture of it in my in my house in my dig. Well, my dig me room's not. It's not done yet. That's my retirement, my quitting nice. gift to myself. I got a, but I got a picture that's signed by Chipper. It says, "You were blocking the moon, bruh." <laughs> I was like I don't know, I don't know what the bruh meant, but the helmet's off, and like I think part of my hair like fell off. He hit me so hard, like I had no idea he was gonna hit me, and I never got tested for concussions. But I remember the only thing I could see, everything was like in a tunnel, and the only thing I could see was I was running over to. I remember, I remember Doc. I remember Roy Holiday dropping a couple of F-bombs at Chipper because I held on to it. And then I remember running over to the, to the dugout and Charlie, Man Charlie Manuel was the manager and he, was, he stuck his hand out to give me a high five and all I could see was Charlie. All I could see was Chuck and everything else was just like, Woo! and it was just like a tunnel vision. And he stuck his like, like arthritis hand out like this <laughs> to give me a high five, which you never knew how to like, give him a high five because you're like, I jam your finger. And he stuck it out to give me a high five. And I gave him a high five. And as soon as I did, it was like, bleep, everything opened back up. And I'm like, I guess I'm good to go. Damn. Back out the next inning. Wow. Oh yeah. That was the apex of my career. I hit a home run later in the, later in the game off of Kimbrel to tie it. Mm. That was it. Did Boom. it become a superstition then? You're like, I need a collision. Yeah. Get me in that no. home run mindset. <laughs> no, no, that was, that was, and I was struggling going into that one. So I was like a couple of games before I hadn't had a hit and he, he hammered me like that. And I'm like, well, Hey, maybe knock some, knock some things loose. Maybe this is my Roy Oswalt spark plug story. It wasn't. 
No. <laughs> pretty much all the same. A lot of people wanted us to ask you about, you know, you say you're searching for a job. Like, what? what's the next step? And that sounds a, a lot like boring media to me, so I don't need you to give me a real answer if you don't want so to. So what's the next step for you, Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but well, I have a job idea for you <laughs> after. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, man, I don't know if I want to say my ideas and then it not be clouded by me thinking the whole time about, you telling me what your idea is and yeah i mean that's that is a great question i have no idea what my next job is i i hope it i hope i can do something that one i mean the most important thing is going to be i have to be home home more with my kids i had to be home more with my family spend time with my wife i have been married for in december 19 years and so she's been She's been on this journey the whole time. And some people are like, oh, big league wives, you know, they get the, no, no, she's been, she's been in it in the grind. And so it's time for us to spend some time together. Um, but I also didn't have an illustrious big league career. And so I need to, I need to get a job. Um, but I'd like to, I'd like to do something that used my, that uses my unique career path. Um, yeah. if it's, if it's with a team, I would also like, like, I would love to, I was talking to, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were like, Oh, you should call, you should call all the organizations you played for and see if they need like a TV or radio guy. And I was like, well, I got a face for radio, but you know, so that really, that intrigues me. I, it, re it really does. Um, because they're like, ah, oh, your schedule's not quite so strict that it's you know you're locked into you're locked into a season like you are with with uh you know being with an organization all right i like radio and and tv and personality if you want to go that way you can do both i think you got to go do consultant for right. every team get every team to pay you and be like yes. listen i'm a triple a you know connoisseur like i I know what gets these guys going. I know what the clubhouse needs, what it doesn't need. I can tell you which AAA clubs sucked and the whole everyone was miserable and which ones had good things, and you just go fix the culture everywhere, and you do it from home. I would love that. I would love that. I And that is, that's really funny that you brought that up because that was one of the things that one of my buddies was like, we were talking about, and he's like, why don't you like – just consult with teams, like spend like a month with an organization and then go to another one. He's like, consultants make way more money than anything else. You just put that word consultant on there. and Yeah. You get paid by pay. 30 clubs instead of just one. Yeah. Oh. Who knows? Well, it's going to be, it, it's whatever it is, whatever it ends up being, I'll be blessed to have the job because a lot of people in baseball have, not to make the whole show somber, but you know, a lot of people in baseball have lost their jobs, have lost, you know, or furloughed and they don't know if they're going to get hired back or minor league teams have gotten cut, all that stuff. So we'll see. I'm excited though. I'm excited to see what, what it ends up being. Would you, would you want to be, you know, a coach? Would you, I mean, obviously you, you're really good at developing with these young pitchers and creating bonds with them. Was that something that you'd want to keep doing? Like, and be active with the development process and, and like hands-on in a coaching or is it like media talking about the game sharing experience uh, more up your alley? Both, both, both are great. I mean, I, I think, I think they're both up my alley. I, I told, I told my wife, she was like, she was like, well, when you start interviewing for this stuff, like, how are you going to prepare for the interview? And I'm like, if whoever I'm interviewing with doesn't want me for who I am, like, I'm not going to change. Like I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't try to be, if I'm going to go work for Fox, I can't try to be Nick Swisher or Frank Thomas or a, like, I'm just going to be me. Like if I'm going to go work for the Yankees in player development, I can't be Bernie Williams or Andy Pettit. Like I'm just going to be me. And I feel like I'll put, I'll put whatever I got into it. But the important thing, whatever the jo next job is, like I said, I, I got to be, I got to be around home. I got to be available, to, available to be around home. So, so we'll see both of those things. I like that consultants. I, I like the, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna push that. I'm it's let an easy every organization pitch. Yeah. open up every organization, open up their minor league system, let me see it, and then go to another organization. I don't think these guys yeah. these guys might not we, we gotta we gotta figure figure like a non compete of some kind. We'll I figure it out. Something along the lines of like the Chris Farley motivational speaker, but more <laughs> tuned. That way that way you're not, you know, they're not giving out any of the analytics stuff, but you're you're talking to the guys, you know? Yep. Yep. Okay. I so. like that. Because I've seen I've seen organizations that have a ton of money and are run like trash. I've seen a ton of organizations that have no money and are run incredible but don't win. I've seen, you know, I've seen good clubhouses not win. I've seen really good good teams in clubhouses with a terrible clubhouse not win. I've seen them win. You know, I've seen, shoot, I played for the Pirates in 2010. There is like no more like crazy environment that you can that you can be in than 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 that all the way to, you know, game seven of the world series in 2014 with the Royals, you know, there's, there's so many different environments. So it's something that's, I don't know what it's going to be, but I think it'll be something cool. 2010. Or maybe I'll work was, at Lowe's. No, don't do that. I don't like baseball there. 2010 was your debut year, right? Yeah. With the pirates. They yep. told you in the middle of the all-star game. Is that right? That's a yeah. clip that got dug up. Triple A All Star Game. Yep, that's pretty cool. At that wow. at that there point, we, were you completely taken by surprise? It seemed like you were. Yes, I, I, not not a hundred percent. I didn't know they were going to do it in the middle of the game, and I definitely didn't know that they were going to ambush me after. So the manager told me, mm -hmm. and I went walking around the corner to go to the clubhouse to call my wife, who was in the stands. And they ambushed me and were like, hey, can you talk on MLB Network and talk about, you know, getting called up? And I'm like, I really want to go and call my wife first. And they're like, we're actually kind of waiting for you to get on. And I'm like, wait a minute, you knew about this? Like, I'm playing in <laughs> yeah. a game? You were willing to take the chance of me getting hurt in this game and, you know, put me out there? I'm like, Sure, I'll go. On. So, everybody that I would have called to tell them that I got called up, they were the last ones to know. And everybody that wasn't at that game, like my dad, my mom, my sister, um, my aunt and uncle were at the game, my best friend was at the game, they were all the last ones to find out because they just knew I got taken out of the game. They didn't know that I had gotten called up. Wow. That's funny because they're probably thinking they're doing that, making it even a more special moment for you, but they kind of <laughs> took it away from all your loved ones. <laughs> in God, a way. I mean, kind of. In yeah, a way. Yeah. In, a yeah, way. in a way. In a way, yeah. Well, Man. when you start when you start talking about making money, I mean, uh, you know, the Eric Kratz movie, I don't know if anyone's talked to you yet, but I mean, dude, and I, you know, I, I don't know if you want to get too serious with this or not, but, you know. 29th round pick you, you don't make it to the bigs until you're 30 and you dude you end up playing in 11 mlb seasons uh, me and jimmy keep drooling over over the brewers stuff like like is there when we're making the eric kratz movie you know 31 we'll figure out a title or whatever but is there is there like the movie scene when you're 28 and some scout whispers like ah, he's never gonna make it like do you do you have one of those moments or what like what's what what is that movie scene you mean where you mean where somebody says you're never gonna make it or like you're staring at yourself in the mirror like what am i doing uh like uh, you know is is it gonna happen like what's what is that scene because dude there there had to be those thoughts oh man you don't have enough you could you, you don't have enough time in your podcast here. You, it, it's uh, I'm gonna run out of I'm gonna run out of juice in my AirPods. It's it's one of those. There's you'll have to, you'll have to buy the book to okay. to to be able to hear all the stories. And I don't even know if he's gonna be able to get all the stories in a book, or else it's gonna be really long. But there was plenty of times, man. There was shoot. There's 2004. I was I was getting sent back 
I consider short season and rookie ball all the same. It's all rookie ball. Sure. And I was getting sent back to rookie ball for my third straight year as a college senior, 29th pick, $1,000 sign. The organization didn't have anything in me. They were just needed a, they needed a warm body to be the backup catcher. And my dad picked me up. Um, he, he never, never goes on business trips. Like he was a butcher. So butchers don't go on business trips. They go to the, they go to the butcher shop, they cut up meat and they go home. And for some reason he was on a book. He was on a business trip up near Auburn, New York, about an hour away. And he knew that we were flying into Auburn to start the season. And he was like, Hey, I'll pick you up. You know, when's the bus coming? So I rode the bus from the airport to the field, got my stuff. And I put my baseball stuff and my personal luggage in the, in his truck. And he was like, and cause I was just getting off the bus and I didn't go into the clubhouse. And he said, can you guys still hear me? Mm-hmm. I wasn't. Yep. My AirPods actually died. <laughs> um, so that's how long the story is. Um, so, and he goes, he goes, all right, well, we'll go, we'll go out to eat. And he said, we went to Applebee's and we were sitting there and I'm like, look, like, just take me home. Like I'm married. I got a wife at home, no kids at the time, but I'm like, just take me home. Like, what's the point? Like, why am I going back to play rookie ball again? And he's like, he, he, he's always very realistic. And he's like, you've come this far play it out and at that point I was a I was a good player like I was a career 300 hitter but they clearly could not have made it any more clear they had no spot for me so they were sending me back to rookie ball and I had spent the previous I guess half the season on the phantom DL so it was as my college coach would say you're gonna go look for an after school job brah that was my college assistant coach. That's what he'd always, that's what he'd always say when somebody wasn't good at baseball, get an after school job. And it was time, you know, it was time for me to look for that. And he said, he told me to stick it out. The season was, you know, it was about to start the season. So I was going to get to play some. Um, and so I did. And, but as far as like a scout that said, that said, yeah, you know, he's never going to make it. I'd love for you to find a scout that said he was going to make it. <laughs> that's well, awesome, man. Go find it. I mean, that's crazy. That's cool that, <clears throat> I mean, there's a, there's some other stories about, I in the, there's a <clears throat> Mark Feinstein book about where, it's called Where Nobody Knows Your Name, and it's about the life of AAA players. And, and that moment <clears throat> where they have to realize, like, you know, some guys are, like, some guys feel rejected by baseball. Other guys feel like, hey, I mean, as long as someone's giving me the opportunity to play, I can make something of it. So how, how quickly after that conversation that year did you start climbing the ranks of, of A ball, double A, all the way up? Was it a slow climb or was, it, was there a big jump from like A to triple A? It was a huge – yeah, it was a huge jump. It was actually that season being on the Phantom DL. Um, this is like the turning point in my career. So that was, that was June, but back in – the I mean you can it's a sad story but it's a it's a really good story for you know based on my career do you remember when Pat Tillman was Mm -hmm. killed Mm -hmm. yeah our double a catcher his name was Paul Chiafredo was great was best friends with Pat Tillman and he went home for the viewing for the services and everything with Pat Tillman and I was on the Phantom DL in, in like in high A basically. And he was the double A catcher. They knew he was going to need to leave. They called me up to double A to fill in for him because I wasn't on a team and they needed somebody to fill in. And that manager and pitching coach, the manager was Mike Basso and the pitching coach is killing me right now. I am – his name was Rick Adair. Rick Adair 
basically took me under their, their wing for the three weeks I was there and really taught me because I didn't play a ton. But when I did, they were like, they would sit down with me and be like, Hey, what were you thinking there? Like pitch calling and not, nothing about like improving myself as, you know, a physical baseball player, but more the mental approach to the game. And the next year I come to find this story out years later, the next year in spring training. So 2005, they didn't have a double a catcher, you know, other guys had moved on other places and they didn't have a double a catcher. And that manager who I was with for three weeks, you know, stood up for me in the meeting and was like, I want Kratz to be my catcher in double a. Damn. And the, I guess the organization was like, sure, whatever. We don't care. Like <laughs> go for it. And that pretty much saved my career. Um, so it was, that was the, when you talk about the jump, I always tell people I was on the, I was on the really slow train to the big leagues, like really slow. And then all of a sudden we just went downhill super fast to the big leagues. And then the tracks just screeching halt again. And it just took forever to get there again. So yeah, it's a, it was an up and down journey. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's a crazy way to get the opportunity. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's good for you. Good for that coach. What was his name? Mike Basso. Mike Basso. Mike Basso. <clears throat> I want to ask about a bunch man. of minor league pitchers that you've caught. Like, who, who's the minor league? Who's the pitcher that you brag about? Like, I caught him when he was back in Double A, or I caught him back when he was, you know, just a twenty-year-old. Um, I mean, D- Davies. Dave Davy is actually really up there for being like, for being a nineteen-year-old. Like, as when I first started catching him for being as mature as he is. But back in the day, the guys that I caught, um, I can't mention some of them because, you know, I thought they were going to be unbelievable, but turns out they were on steroids. Okay. So all the guys that all the guys that I thought were unbelievable when I first started coming up, they never really, you know, they never really ended up panning out. Um, but the name that I thought, the two names I thought of right away, had good careers in the big leagues. Remember Brandon League? Yeah, I remember yeah. that name. Um, he was in. He was in the. Uh, he was in the system at the time. Um, I got to catch him in Double A, but the one that I we we used to keep in touch. I haven't kept in touch with him for for a while now. But Dustin McGowan, do you remember Dustin McGowan? Yeah, I thought he was a can't miss going to be a 15 year big leaguer. And I blame myself for that because I caught him in double a one time and he, he struck out like 13 guys. We were in Reading, and he struck out like 13 guys sat 94, 97 when that was not normal when it wasn't time a dozen. (laughs) And like, he had huge legs. Like this guy was just the prototypical, what a pitcher was going to be. And I came in after the game and I was like, man, great job, dude. Like that was an unbelievable game. Thank. Like, I remember thinking, man, my hand must be bruised. He was throwing so hard. He was lights out hammer curveball, And he goes, yeah, he goes, probably not going to pitch for another year. Oh. And he looks down at his elbow and his, it looked like he had a softball coming out of his elbow. He tore his Tommy John. Ooh. And I'm like, I just broke the best pitcher in the world. Oh, I broke no. him, and it's my fault. And I got, I was able to, I was able to live that down because in 2006 I caught his last start before they called him up from Double A. So it was kind of, it was kind of cool that I actually like, okay, I didn't break the guy, but he would have been up in the big leagues in a matter of starts, not months. Starts. Damn, mm. D Mac. Ten-year career for him, pretty good. Yeah, really good. Mostly as a reliever, um, yeah. but yeah. When you're when you're going team to team, and you and you know, back when the Astros stuff happened, I think there was a quote from you, not saying that it was the Astros, but you were saying, yeah, like this pitch recognition, um, computer stuff is crazy in in different places. I think that was you who said you there was some team. I don't know. My point is. 
Did you ever? Did teams ever ask you for insight? We we know that the Dodgers traded for someone from the Astros just to ask, what the hell are they doing over there? Um, you went from ball club to ball club, and it seems now like e- everyone wants to know what are they doing? What are they doing? When you when you got picked up, was there ever like a tell us what you know meeting that they tried to get out of you, or is it just no way? For sure. Okay. No, absolutely. Oh, I have no like, like I am. Probably to a fault, I am 100% in on where I'm at. Like okay. for the two days I was in Boston, I'm 100% in. Right. And I leave there. I felt like a hockey player. Like I feel like a hockey player. And I never like got into fights with people. But like just because you're my buddy and you're my you know, ex-teammate, like if you, if you stole signs a certain way, I'm going to tell the next team I play on. Like – Okay. Your secret's not safe with me. Like I'm going to, I'm going to, and I was told, you know, during the whole Astros thing, I played for the Astros in 16. I told him, I said, I started the trash can thing. I just have really bad hearing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cause I hit like 50 for him, like zero 50. Um, no, like, like all that stuff, all that stuff always happens. Yeah. I remember I went from, I went from the blue Jays to the Royals and Don Wakamatsu the first thing he did, he's like, I want you to tell me all of their signs. And he was the bench coach for the, for the Royals. And he's like, I want you to tell me all their signs. Cause I wasn't going to remember their signs after I'm gone. So I well, deep told them right all their signs. Yeah. What about, I mean, all right. So you spent like a week with the Rays in 2018 and that was, or 19. I don't know, but it was in between the CC 19. and, and the Rays and the bad blood. And I believe you, you caught against the Yankees. Um, yes. Is there, is there, and then you yeah. come back to the Yankees and this year, obviously it's the Yankees and Rays is a big rivalry and there's bad blood uh, now. And there's people throwing at each other's heads. Did you get a sense of that on both sides when you, cause you you've been part of it from both sides. Like, is it actually as heated as it, 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 it seems sometimes? For sure. Absolutely. Okay. It is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not like, I don't know how people view it like, oh, the whole dugout steaming. You know, it's not – nobody's nobody's sitting there. But extra trash you know. talk. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And I think, and I think it probably all stemmed back to um, – I think it was Kittredge hit, yeah. hit Romine, mm-hmm. and then yeah. CC came out and hit Sucre. Yeah, yeah. There was the – where CC said, that's for you, bitch, to uh, Kittredge. To Cash. To Cash no, or to, Kittredge, whoever it was. To Cash, right. And, and like, you know, I, I've, I've seen, I've seen the inside of both of them. I've seen the inside of it being heated on, on both, on both sides. And, you know, it, some of those cases I'm like, depending on who it is, I'm like, yeah, that guy right there, he hates you. Like, I like, I like kind of like seeing some guys yeah. and other guys when they're just heated and they don't know what they're all angry about. I'm like, all right, whoa, like. First of all, this person handled it a little bit wrong. Like, let's let's pump the brakes. And then it usually inevitably comes down to somebody being like, What kind of guy is he? Yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna shoot you straight. Like, if the guy's if the guy's, you know, if the guy's a jerk, I'm gonna tell you. He, nobody likes him. But and sometimes that kind of that kind of uh I don't know, it it kinda it kinda soothes the fire a little bit but in other ways it's like i don't care i don't like the guy anyway that's what rivalries are about yeah yes, i love sir. it so how, were some of the rays upset if they asked you about cc and you're already saying his praises early in the podcast because that's who started it and you were like oh no cc's actually great they're like fuck <laughs> no i think i think they knew from the Rays standpoint i think they knew they knew they handled that situation bad and they knew that cc stoned them Mm-hmm. Like how he handled it was gangster. Yeah. And like, so it was like, I mean, especially when it came out that like he came up like two thirds of an inning shy of, of a bonus. And he, yeah. And he was just like, whatever, like this is for the boys. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't care. And that's, you know, and that's the kind of guy he is. And there's, there's only, there's only a few guys where each side it's like, what's he really like? And CC. CC wasn't one of those guys. They they knew that this guy was he was show. 
there, there's, they knew what he was about. And for any MLB teams listening, this and any other inside information could be yours with Kratz <laughs> Consulting. One time, one time annual fee. <laughs> you come around for what, like a long weekend, give them the goods, and then you're out. Yeah. Wait, wait. I can work. I do work weekends. There you go. For 20 years straight. Yeah. Basically. All the time. Yeah, I work Sundays. That's what that that was the, that was the day Wednesday day games and Sunday day games. <laughs> That's the backup catcher routine, right? I didn't even know my eyes were bad at night until I started playing night games, like in like 2016. <laughs> um, we get we get told that about Guardy a lot. That like Phil Hughes and some places told us that when they went other places, the guys would be like. Is he really an asshole? Like, what's he like? And they're like, no, he's the prankster. Like, he's he just not like that on the field. Um, so that that is funny that you know, even other fan bases, they just they only see the on the field version of these guys. Because you yeah. know, if you ask anyone in the Yankees, a, a Yankee, they just tell you about Gardner, the prankster, and jokester, and and that. So, but yeah, yep. tough guy. Yep, you're exactly right. Look like that. All right. Any uh, you want to uh, pump up your pitching stats a little bit before we before we go? The knuckleball was dancing this year. I think that that sings to Jake's heart a lot. He's a knuckleball. Yeah. It was. Pissed. It was dancing but again. I was just. That was just. I must be a media darling because two home runs. Like who? Did, I I had a terrible ERA this year. My career ERA skyrocketed this year. And Tinger was oh, telling us that you would brag about that ERA. It was great. It was yeah. great. Yeah. King, who was telling you Kinger was telling yeah. you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would tell Kinger all the time. I got a better ERA than he does in the show. Yeah, and more strikeouts for a little bit, <laughs> but he, uh, but yeah, shoot, it was trash. It, it gets <laughs> pissed, pissed. Was My there ERA went was there the roof. was there ever the genuine temptation to be like, I'm going to the mound with this thing? Like I. I can get people out. I can be a pitcher. Have you? Does your baseball reference not work? Have you seen my career? I mean, average? that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm when you go to Cashman at the negotiating table because you know he's coming back. You know he just didn't give the qualifying offer. He'll start at 15 mil. But like, you're a two way player. Two way player, and they are value. They are valuable now with the 26 man and the two way player and the three batter minimum all electronic strike zone. That's going to really help me. So that's what I'm waiting for. Yep. That's what I'm coming back. I'm coming back for it. But no, I, I don't. I, I don't know <laughs> that it would have ever. I think my elbow is probably pretty close to exploding. And it will never explode if I stay on the flat ground. But if I stay, if, if I get on the mound, it might not make it. It might not mm. make it. You pitch for four different teams. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> is that impressive or depressive? Which is it? I think, I mean, that's Damn. you pitch for more teams than Phil Hughes, who I just said earlier. You know? Phil, Phil Hughes. Phil Hughes in the same, in one podcast was mentioned twice. Yes. We're Yankee podcast at heart. We just know the guys we yeah. know. <laughs> yes. That is great. That is Man. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you for coming on. We ate up a lot of your time, but um, like we said a lot, you got the baseball life that's got – I mean, we could have asked questions for days. So we'll have to get you back on here once you land that position. You announce it here, and we'll just do another hour of just asking you millions of questions. Yeah. Perfect. And if the consultant position happens, you guys might have to have me on more because you guys have way more Twitter followers than I do. So I need – I need to get myself out there. It is just, I feel like I'm a, I feel like I need a guy like you guys could be my guy on the corner. That's flipping the sign. Like okay. direction here, consultant yeah. this yes. way, flip yeah, the yeah. sign. No one knows more about a triple a clubhouse and what gets guys in the, in the mood to, to play well, whatever the you, saying is. If you don't want to spend on your big league free agents, spend on this guy, bald, what? yes, bearded, <laughs> And a consultant. What what would be your number one thing be that's that that the difference between, you know, a, a positive clubhouse down because triple A can be a frustrating place. You got guys that think they're that got sent down that think they should have stayed up. You got guys that haven't been called up yet. I think they need to get called. What's the difference maker to keep that 
those guys in the right headspace? Is there like just don't give it don't away? Don't give it to me. Yeah, don't give it to me. We'll end it here. <laughs> you want that answer? Call them up for an interview. Perfect. Interviews yeah. aren't free either. Yeah, <laughs> That's the thing. we could have. I would. I would love to be back on. You guys. You guys love. You guys seem like you love talking baseball. And you know your baseball too. So, and anybody with a gold chain like that, I got yeah. a quick tell. I got a quick tell a uh, Yankee story since you got the gold chain. All right. Kyle Higashioka is my roommate in AAA. The guy is the quietest sleeper. I snore. I mean, look at this nose. Like, that nose <laughs> snores. Like, I'm a terrible nose. roommate. But People see you on the street roommate. and they know you snore. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And so he was struggling in AAA. This was 2018. We are in Paul Tuckett. And Higgy goes, in all. <laughs> In only Higgy's comedic fashion goes, and he's going to kill me for telling this story, but he goes, all the good hitters that I see come up to the plate, they got nice gold chains. He's like, I'm getting a gold chain. (laughs) So he ordered a gold chain and it came to the clubhouse in Pawtucket. And he has a nice gold chain. And I don't even know if he still wears it too much anymore. But he put it on and started raking. I mean, he ended up with 20 home runs last year in AAA. And the funny thing was he started raking from that point on, went back to the big leagues, hit his first home run against David Price, and he's like, it's got to be the gold chain. Well, in that series, the last game of that series, I get called into the manager's office, and I get traded to the Brewers, which sent me on the – you know, the – awesome path of playing for the yeah. brewers so that gold chain so jake i don't want you to feel upset that he's wearing the gold chain you guys are you guys are brothers in this talking baseball you might be helping jimmy out letting him wear the gold chain yeah. higgy never let me uh, wear the gold chain but we were roommates and it pushed us both in great directions so you, you touched, two can be gold you t- chain you touched higgy's gold chain at one point for sure, as yeah. long as we don't go any farther than that. Okay, yes. there you go. <laughs> yes. Getting the, getting the waterworks going over here. It's beautiful. Can I, I've been trying to fart the whole time to get you to say, please don't fart in Japanese. So yeah, I'm exhausted. You didn't you didn't do this loud enough on the mic, so I couldn't. And my yeah. AirPods ended, so I can't hear if you farted or not. Yeah. But <laughs> Onada shita? Yes. We start where we finish. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi. Higgy's yes. awesome. Hi. God damn it. Yeah. If All right. Hey. Want, if you want Tanaka to come back, you got to learn some Japanese. Duolingo, download it, learn some Japanese. I can count to 10 in Japanese too. So you got to learn it. Okay. Last, last question. We know we're going to look. Okay. Is, Tanaka the, is Tanaka the coolest ever? Oh, man. Tanaka <laughs> is so cool. I asked Tanaka, I said, who's more famous? Your wife? Or no, I said, who gets, who, who runs up to you? Who gets more people running up to you in Japan if you go out in Tokyo? Because I was giving him a hard time because I was in Tokyo last off season and he didn't, he didn't invite me to his house. Like nothing, like didn't even, <laughs> like no, no teppanaki or anything. Like no sake, nothing. And I'm pissed. And he's like, he said, I can't go out in Tokyo. I said, okay, that's fine. I said, but who gets more who gets more people running up to him your wife or you and he's like uh maybe different people i said okay so <laughs> your wife your, your wife. wife have more people yeah come. and he goes i am famous too <laughs> and that's always- <laughs> oh man it made, me, it made me laugh so hard i am famous too Man, I always, I always say Judge and, and Stan think they're superstars, but they ain't nothing to Tanaka in, J- in Japan. Nothing. And his, and his marriage is royalty, and his wife is so nice. She's so nice. Ugh. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. All right, we're awesome. having you back on in a couple months to do round two. You Perfect. Too many you more have any questions. shows in the next couple months? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Unbelievable. Damn. Oh. All right, thank Feel you, man. Seen. Appreciate it. No doubt, guys. Have a good one. Baseball!
All right, there you have it. Uh, like we said, it just kept getting better and better. Those Higgy and Tanaka stories at the end were hilarious. Um, yeah, we got to have him back on, man. He should go consult because who can say that they've seen that many clubhouses? Everyone just knows what their own AAA clubhouse is. Like, he could be like, I, dude, I've been to 20. I can tell you the good and the bad. I know what works. I know what doesn't. It's a perfect job. Yeah, I mean that. That seems like a layup. That interview was the cheese. The cheese. Um, we'll we'll be saying that a lot around John Boy Media going forward. And yeah, man, I mean, talk a unique perspective. Um, you know, it, it it's literally you don't you don't see baseball stories that look like that, and with the personality to go with it, he's going to be around. And it's uh, you know, I I think he's down downplaying it a little bit, but he. I think any organization would want him. I think many will want him. I, media will be calling. Uh, so it's cool. I, I mean, an awesome dude. And, yeah, I, I think we we will probably be linking up with him again on Talking Yanks, maybe Talking Baseball. And I think he's down for it, too. He's, he's getting in the game, baby. Yep. Yeah, Talking Baseball, we talk all about the Brewers and Royals and everything else he's been a part of. But hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Tell your family Thanksgiving from Jake. Jake wants everyone to hear Jake says thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. That's happy that. Thanksgiving. Grab all your parents' phones, subscribe to the podcast, leave a review. Obviously, we love you. See you later. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees.